state because of the different types of landscapes in the different regions, harsh climates, and of course, wildlife and fishing. Alaska is very different from Georgia. The population of the entire state is only 737,000. Anchorage, the largest city in Alaska, is about the size of Augusta. The estimated population of Anchorage is 290,000, which is about the population of Richmond County and Columbia County combined. Although Alaska may not have large cities, it is by far the biggest state, measuring in at about 650,000 square miles. The second largest state is Texas, and it measures in at about 250,000 square miles. This shows us how big Alaska really is. Alaska is a vast state made up of mountains and glaciers. It has the largest glacier in the United States, the Bering Glacier. In total, there are about 100,000 glaciers, and 616 of them are named. If you've ever seen a glacier, you know they have a blue color to them. The reason for this is that the dense ice can absorb every color of the light spectrum, except blue, so that is the color they appear. Glaciers are not just compacted snow. As they move throughout the water, they pick up many different things, such as rock and soil. Alaska is also home to some of the most diverse mountain ranges in North America. 30 different mountain ranges spread across the state. You can find 17 of the 20 tallest mountains in the United States and Alaska. Some of the significant mountain ranges are the Alaska Range, Aleutian Range, and the Brooks Range. The Alaska Range is a fairly narrow range that's about 400 miles long. It contains the Denali, which is the tallest mountain in North America, with an elevation of 20,000 feet. The Aleutian Range is known for its extremely cold weather. The Brooks Range is 700 miles long and stretches into Canada's Yukon Territory. This range is about 126 million years old. Alaska is divided up into five different regions. Arctic or far north, interior, southwestern, south central, and southeast. Arctic Alaska is located in the northern part of the state. Very few people live in the Arctic region due to the harsh low temperatures. Most of the Arctic region is inside of the Arctic Circle. Interior Alaska is located in the middle of the state and is mostly wilderness. It contains the Denali, the Wrangell Mountains, and the Ray Mountains. It is an area teeming with wildlife, such as bears, moose, and birds. Southwestern Alaska stretches 1,000 miles into the Pacific Ocean. It contains a national park where island fishing called Enchanted Lake Lodge. Additionally, it is home to the Aleutian Islands, which are known for having some of the harshest weather in the world. South Central Alaska is home to most of the population of the state, but still has a huge amount of wilderness. Southeast Alaska contains the capital city, Juneau, which can only be accessed by boat or plane. It was also the starting point of the Klondike Gold Rush. Since Alaska is located near the North Pole, the number of daylight hours fluctuates widely with the seasons. The farther north you go, the greater fluctuation between light and dark. In the summertime, it is typically light out for most of the day, and in the winter, there are only a few hours of light. For example, a city in Alaska that was formerly called Barrow that is close to the Arctic Circle, has 80 days straight of daylight during the summertime, and 66 sunless days during the winter. Alaska also houses some of the coolest animals in the world. My favorite are the bears. There are four different types of bears. The brown bear, you may be more familiar with the term, grizzly bear, is the largest and one of the fiercest bears in North America. The black bear is found in most parts of America, including Georgia. Of course, the bear most people associate with Alaska polar bear. It is best known for its survival skills in harsh conditions. The glacier bear, also known as the blue bear, is a subspecies of the American black bear and has adapted its colors to survive in the snowy regions of Alaska. This past summer, I had a close encounter with the grizzly bear. I was walking from the main lodge to our cabin. When I went to open the door, I saw the bear around the corner of the cabin. I quickly ran inside and locked the windows and doors. <laughs> The bear was probably 10 yards away from me when I saw him. If you ever have a similar encounter with a bear, I would recommend to stay calm and quiet. Here are a few tips on what to do. Make sure to keep as much distance from the bear as possible. All bears have personal space, and if the bear feels as if you were in that space, it can be aggressive, especially the female bears with cubs. 
You always want to remain quiet. The more noise you make, the more suspicious the bear will be. And a suspicious bear is more inclined to do something unpredictable. Another one of my favorite wildlife encounters was with the moose. <laughs> Just as Alaska is big, the animals seem to grow huge as well. My uncle and I were going to fly Piper Cubs in a small airport just outside of Anchorage. We landed on a gravel runway close to a glacier. As we got out of the plains, we began to walk over to the glacier, and there were three moose. The male moose was about six feet tall, with huge antlers that were three feet in length. Moose, just like bears, are no animal to mess with. Moose can be extremely dangerous if startled. You want to keep as much distance from the moose as possible. But if the moose shows any sign it might attack, your best option is to get behind a tree and keep the tree in between you and the moose. <laughs> My uncle and I respectfully stayed back and allowed them to cross our path and go on their way. Many people travel to Alaska to hunt, fish, and view the wildlife. My family goes to Alaska for the sport of fishing, and because it is in a national park, it is catch and release. I have fished for trout in Montana, and it does not compare to the fishing in Alaska. I went fishing in a lodge called Enchanted Lake Lodge, located in Katmai National Park. We fished for four days, seven hours each day. We would wake up at 6.30 in the morning and get ready for a full day of fishing. A few things we needed to be on the river are waders, fly rods, and layers of the cold. Waders are a waterproof type of pan that allows you to walk in about chest high water without getting wet. A fly rod is a type of fishing rod made for fly fishing. Fly rods are the lightweight lure called an artificial fly used to catch fish. After we have everything we need to fish, we go down a big hill from our cabin to a dock for float planes. We pack the planes with equipment and taxi out onto a lake close to the lodge. If you ever have a chance to ride on a plane with floats, I would highly recommend doing so. We then would take off and fly to our des designated fishing spot for that day. Rainbow trout, lake trout, dolly barn trout, long nose sucker fish, and pike are all varieties of the fish I caught. The rainbow trout gets its name for its rainbow colors. On average, they're about 16 inches long. Some rainbow trout migrate to the ocean and become steelhead trout. The rainbow trout is the most common type of fish in the National Park. Lake trout are the largest of the trout and can grow up to 100 pounds. They are similar to the rainbow trout but different in size and color. The lake trout have a brown spotted pattern to them. Dolly Barton are in the salmon eye family and have a gray color to them. Long nosed sucker fish get their name for the motion their mouths make and how they eat off the bottom of the river. They are coated with gray with a light colored stomach. Pike are the predator fish of the rivers. They typically sit in the calm, murky spots off to the side of the river. Pike are a carnivorous fish, meaning they eat other smaller fish. Many people don't like having pike in the river because they prey on the other fish, so they're fewer to catch. My most exciting catch was when I caught a pike. I was fishing with a floater for the first time, and to my surprise, a huge pike broke the surface of the water completely and swallowed my float. I felt a very powerful tug, and then began the fight of reeling in and letting him swim. Finally, as he landed, I was amazed to see a 40-inch pike, the largest fish I've caught so far. Tourism plays a very important role in Alaska's economic system. An estimated 2 million people visit Alaska between the months of May and September. Those are typically the months people visit because the weather is not as cold and snowfall is limited. With this many people visiting, the state requires a lot of staff to make the tourist visit enjoyable. About one of eight jobs in Alaska are tourism related. Tourists annually spend $297 million and that excludes what they spend on a cruise or airfare. Over half of those people arrive on cruise ships. In this short speech, I have only been able to give you a small taste of my experience at Alaska. I would strongly recommend putting a trip to Alaska 